You're listening to Endoy, America's Insurance Talent Showcase. This podcast is brought to you by Amtrust North America, Berkshire Hathaway Guard Insurance Companies, Ecomp Workers' Compensation. The ability to problem solve is a fundamental characteristic of all million dollar producers, but Sean Edgington takes it to a whole new level. Sean's passion for finding solutions led her to create Ecomp, a national pay as you go workers' compensation program. Sean problem solved by creating her own unique intellectual capital, which brings opportunity not only to consumers, but to the insurance brokerage community and the payroll industry. And coming full circle, today we'll also hear how Sean gives back by advocating solutions for kids challenged by cyber bullies. Sean, thank you for being here. Uh, thanks, Lynn, for having me. So why don't we start with a little of your backstory? Have you always been insurance? Were you born to be an entrepreneur? Give me a little bit about how you grew up and how you got into insurance. The answer is I think yes and yes. So my parents were in the insurance business, and so I was born into it. They say it's either you're born into it or by accident, so I'm born. And then entrepreneur, yes. Uh, I, I think I started in brownies, selling the most Girl Scout, you know, Girl Scout cookies and all the car washes, lemonade stands, anything I could do to make a buck, housekeeping services. So, wow. Yeah, so I think it started at a very young age, and I love it. I've learned that top salespeople always boil sales down to a selling strategy or a specific process. So tell us a little something about yours. So I think my strategy is really to work with people that want to work with me, that need help, and that I actually have something to offer them. So, and really honesty, and really always trying to do the best for my client. I've never really thought of, as a, of insurance or a career, or I've never thought of it as a way to make money. I've thought of it more as a way to help people, and money is an end result. Okay, so yeah, so that goes back to the lemonade stands and the brownie, the cookies, and that kind of thing. There is something that drives you to want to sell more cookies or more yeah, lemonade. I always wanted to sell the most of anyone else. Why? So I, I, something about me is competitive, even though I don't like to admit that all the time. So yeah, I always want to, if or I want to get whatever that whatever that uh, end result is, so like a, a patch sometimes. You know, like when you were a Girl Scout, you got the cookie patch for selling the most cookies or what have you. So I, I don't, I and yeah, I wasn't, at that time, cookies, I was just an ends to the mean to the patch, really. So. <laughs> okay, so here, here we go. So now we have this desire to provide a solution and help to people along with this competitive nature that wants to sell a lot of cookies. So how did you put those two together in insurance to get to where you are today in terms of a million-dollar commission or revenue production in insurance? So I don't know if you remember this, but back in the day, uh, Hartford basically came out and pioneered a pay-as-you-go program for workers' compensation across the country with the one exception of California. And they did this with paychecks. And this was back in probably, nine, probably 2002, 2003. And one of my very good friends was one of the top salespeople at paychecks. And so she was always so frustrated because she heard about how great pay-as-you-go was, but she couldn't do it in California because Hartford was the only carrier that was doing pay-as-you-go with paychecks, and the only carrier in the industry doing it. And so she referred all of her workers' compensation accounts to the agency, and we wrote them traditional workers' comp policy. So as I was, what does this pay go? What, what does this mean? I don't understand it. And as I dove deeper into it, I came up with an, a strategy to launch a pay-go program with Ursula, the company she was working with, because then she left to go to a different company that was national, and um, one insurance company. So we did that. We uh, started developing software and the technology that enabled us to basically create a real pay-as-you-go process for our customers and for her customers. And we had one carrier, which was employers, and employers got it. They're like, okay, we get it because they were doing it with, with they were about to do it with paychecks. And this was when, you know, Paygo was relatively new in the industry. And uh, thank thank God they said, we'll do this with you. Like, we, we you know, we see your technology. We would know what you're going to do. And we built that technology from scratch. 
And actually, it's a, it was a hard lesson because we spent uh, $250,000 on our first round wow. and then scrapped it because mm. it didn't do what we needed to do and it was on the wrong platform and then started all over again. So, but it does, you know, pay, pay go is an amazing um, offering and it's just something that I believe in and I think it's the best solution for a client for a worker's comp policy. And now you're actually able to offer it through a number of carriers and actually not only help the carriers and the clients, but the payroll companies. Yeah, so fast forward, we have 10 companies now that we work with and we're the only other provider in the country besides one in New York that has this technology. So yeah, we are, we're in a really good space right now. Uh, and it's, it's a, it's a service that truly, it's just not available anywhere. I mean, it not in the, not in the way our technology enables our clients to, to report their payroll and which they don't have to do it. It's all automated. So we leverage technology that way and avoid deposits and avoid audits or minimize audits. So, so you created this uh, tremendous platform and I would say that there's many insurance people who would, that would be their, you know, the great football game of the century for them, and they would keep reliving that play. And, and you've built this, and it continues to grow, but you didn't stop there. No, we, what, what, what I saw happening in the marketplace is that brokers were starting to lose their business to ADP and paychecks, insurance agencies by B of R because they had the pay-go technology and the brokers didn't. And I thought there's got to be a way that we can offer the solution to brokers out there. Like there's gotta be a way we can help them retain their business. And because there's, I, I have to admit, I don't like ADP or paychecks winning over us because we are the experts and the professionals and we wanna keep our business. So that took a couple of years for us to figure out how to make that work, how to make that, how to, and really the hardest part was the compensation piece, how to actually survive on a really minimal amount of compensation and give the lion's share to the broker because we know that a broker is not going to use a wholesaler or for a special program unless they're getting paid decently. You know, 5% just doesn't work uh, as, you know, as a comp commission. So it took a while to get that. Once we figured that out, we launched it to uh, brokers in 2012. Okay, so you also morphed this mentality is almost a little bit of a David and Goliath mentality um, into employee benefits. So give me a little overview of what you've done in employee benefits. I heard about this company called Zenefits, and I thought and I and I heard it was automating compliance and enrollments and and I'm like, oh my God, that is the answer to my prayers. And so I thought, okay, I gotta, I gotta see what this is. And I have a nonprofit, and so I signed up for a demo underneath my nonprofit to see if that was something that my nonprofit could use, and just to really see what the solution was and what it was all about. After I was finished with that forty-five minute demo, I went home and told my husband, I need to close our benefits department because this was so amazing, and it was better than sliced bread. And I thought. How are we ever going to compete with this? I didn't sleep all night, which often happens in my life. And the <laughs> next morning I woke up and I said, oh, no, 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 no. We are not closing the benefits department. We are finding something better. Because I thought, okay, technology is a great solution, but that's not 100% of the solution. It's our professionalism, our experience, our expertise in benefits coupled with the technology. And I knew all Zenefits was offering was the technology. So I thought if I had both of those things, then we are, you know, we are on steroids, right? So that's what I, I spent like six months vetting all the different benefit administration software solutions and ended up selecting Maxwell Health because it did exactly what I wanted it to do. So what's the biggest lesson you've learned about insurance sales and how did it transform your career? I would say the very... Well, there's a few big lessons. I would say specialize in what you're doing. Really know everything about it. And I'm not talking about, you know, spending an hour or two. I'm talking about if you have to go work in an office for a day to understand what, you know, what their exposures are, do that. And then be really good at that and always be for the best interest of your client no matter what. If I am working on an account, it's better for them to stay where they are go elsewhere, then I will recommend that because I believe that you have to do the best thing for your client first 
and it comes back to you. Yeah, no, absolutely, I agree. So um, even top performers hit roadblocks, obstacles, failure. How do you work through them? I love obstacles. Uh, I don't love failure. And I think for me, I can't give up on an obstacle. I have to get through it, and I have to figure out how to solve it. And I will honestly drive myself batty, and I won't sleep for days until I figure out how I'm going to resolve that. And there's a lot of them, let's face it, in our industry, especially I'm a woman. Um, I'm an agency principal, and we're working with carriers that sometimes aren't real, real true partners. And I've learned that to work with carriers that really want to be a partner versus just a provider of a contract. And then also surround myself with a really good team of people and people who really have a like um, thought process and belief system and really have the best interest, not of themselves. Um, you know, we have to take care of our customers first and, and things don't happen overnight. You mentioned carrier partners, and I had asked you earlier if you only had a handful that you could take along with you to further your success. What is it about those carriers that make them so vital to your success? Well, I come up with some crazy ideas, Lynn, and so I have to be able to talk to someone and who can understand my thought process and why my crazy idea really can be something that's amazing for both of us, both the agency and the clients also and the company. And so in the last, you know, 25 years, we've ha I've had those companies and partners that believe in doing things a little different, uh, changing something so that it works in a new process that makes something better. And those lines of communications have to be open and just to be able to solve big problems and a vision for the future as well. So, Excellent. So you brought up your nonprofit, and I'd love to sort of wrap up our conversation. I want to find out about that and how you give back and, you know, how it, it relates to the work that you do in insurance. Um, Building up my income and my agency to a point allowed me to focus on a cause. And my daughter was... Uh, the target of a really bad cyberbullying situation in 2009. Cyberbullying? Yeah. And uh, so it, it was very bad. Um, she turned into a different person, and she went into depression, and she, uh, what I thought would never happen to my straight-A student who's a cheerleader and the, you know, secretary of her whole class office and had everyone as a best friend. And so I thought, if this can happen to my daughter, oh, God, it can happen to any daughter or any ch child. So, um I thought, okay, I'm going to write a book about this to help parents figure out because by the time the whole thing was over, like nine months fast forward, I thought, holy Toledo, I am in risk management and safety, and I could not keep my daughter safe, and I had no risk management in place proactively. She had a phone, and things were happening on there that I had no idea. So, And I had no idea it really could happen, to be quite honest. I was just I was ignorant. And so I thought, I'm going to write a, a book about a parent's guide to how to deal with all these things. And then, of course, I had to come up with contracts, because I'm in the contract business, <laughs> to engage their children in so that they kind of had the rules of engagement, which is what it was called, um, before they even got their phone. And I always use the analogy, would you ever give your child the keys to a car when they turn 16 without having driver's license, without, well, without having experience behind the wheel and without, you know, starting at ground, you know, ground zero and working their all, way all the way up. No, you wouldn't because they'd crash and die maybe. And so with a cell phone, I feel the same way. You, you know, you just don't hand a cell phone over without going through the rules and what can happen and um, teaching them what they need to know and putting those parental controls on there that, you know, need to be um, automated by you, the parent. And then after, at one of my, um, at one of my uh, press conferences for the book, it was in Philadelphia, I thought, I had kind of an aha moment, and I thought, you know what, These, it's, it's not the parents who need to know what to do. At the end of the day, it's the kids. Because parents don't listen to their kids, they listen to their peers. They don't respect their parents enough to go, oh yeah, I'm not gonna do that because my mom said so. So uh, I came up with the idea, um, I was flying back on, I think, I think it was United, 
and uh, I saw like a infomercial, uh, Billabong was having a skateboard contest, a challenge. And it was the coolest video with the coolest skateboard trick. And I'm like, oh, what if I had kids, you know, create a video around this, this issue, this problem, this concern, and have a contest? And everything kind of blew up from there. So it's called the Great American No Bull Challenge. And we did start out focusing on bullying and anti-bullying. And now we've kind of evolved into we really want the youth to pick what that issue is within their community. Because you realize when you're in a, in a small town in Ohio with 53 students in your senior class that the problems are very different than they are in California with 2,000 students in your school. So we really wanted to be focused on the community and the school and the youth, the problems they're having. I mean, you have schools that have drug problems, alcohol problems, texting and driving. You have suicide. You have all these things that are just... They're so big, and um, and the topic is is all consuming, and especially for them. And so we gave them a platform where they can actually stand up, speak out, and our goal is to actually have the spotlight shine on them for doing so. And so we basically hold a red carpets meets the Oscars event every year, and we have nominees, and then we announce our winners at the event. We have. You know, it's a big musical performance, usually four or five of them that happen throughout the award announcements. And it's really an experience that we've had kids come to, it's in LA every year, and we've had, we've had, our, we've had students come from um, all over the country, and some of them never been on a plane before. So it's really like we give them a cool experience for a whole weekend, and it's just something that uh, I feel like I'm giving back in my insurance career because it's such a great industry we are in has enabled me to do that and I feel very lucky to do that and I know that I've changed people's lives these kids lives because of because they've told me I mean I the stories that I hear are incredible and you really can't believe it because that's not really your goal is just really to help them get to a better place well I believe you've changed some lives here with some insurance people and some non-insurance people so thank you so much for spending time with us today and sharing well thanks for having me Lynn This podcast is brought to you by Amtrust North America, Berkshire Hathaway Guard Insurance Companies, Ecomp Workers' Compensation. You're listening to Endoy, America's Insurance Talent Showcase.